It's a pleasant day and happy learning to each and everyone. I am Hernes Angelica T. Sebastian, a second year student taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. For today's video, we will be learning about the government policies on science and technology. For this topic, we will look forward to achieve the following learning objectives, which is by the end of this lesson, we students are expected to know the different government policies on science and technology and understand the topics being discussed. At today's world, we are living in a time of rapid growth of technology and innovation. Science and technology fuel advancements which move the world. And like the rest of the world, science and technology is integrated for opportunities programs, social transformations, and development for the betterment of humanity and society. Based on readings, societies create science and technology, and the science and technology make societies better. On the path of maximizing science and technology, policies are necessary to improve the area of science and technology. But what do we mean by policy? Policy is a plan or action. It is a definite course or method by government used to guide and to determine present and future decisions. Science and technology policy is one of the important role to the betterment and development of any country. Technology has a fundamental role in wealth creation, improvement of the quality of life, and real economic growth and transformation in any society. In order to achieve positive use of science and technology, the Philippine government introduced and implemented several programs, projects, and policies to boost the area of science and technology. And the goal is to prepare the whole country and its people to meet the demands of technologically driven world and capacitate the people to live in a world driven by science. According to Padilla Conception in 2015, in response to the ASEAN 2015 agenda, the government, particularly the Department of Science and Technology or DOST, has sought the expertise of the National Research Council of the Philippines to consult various sectors in the society to study how the Philippines can prepare itself in meeting the ASEAN 2015 goals. And as a result of the consultation, the NCRP is expected to recommend policies and programs that will improve the competitiveness of the Philippines in the ASEAN region. And here then the National Research Council of the Philippines or the NCRP clustered these policies into four. Namely, first the social sciences, humanities, education, international policies, and governance. Second, the physics, engineering, and industrial research, earth and space science, and mathematics. Third, medical, chemical, and pharmaceutical sciences. And lastly, number four, the biological sciences, agriculture, and forestry. First, is the social sciences, humanities, education, international policies, and governance. Alongside with this notion are integrating ASEAN awareness in basic education without adding to the curriculum. As described, aside from being a powerful driver of social and economic development, education has the potential to raise ASEAN awareness and foster a regional identity. The next, emphasizing teaching in the mother tongue, research shows that education in the mother tongue is a key factor for inclusion and quality learning, which is crucial for increased speed of learning and development. Third, developing school infrastructure and providing for ICT broadband. Developing school infrastructure and providing for ICT broadband is this is to provide learners a quality education in relation to science and technology. And lastly, to improve local food security. 
second, which is the physics, engineering, and industrial research, earth and space sciences, and mathematics. It includes emphasizing degree, licenses, and employment opportunities. This is to ensure that people will receive good opportunities where their profession will be maximized and developed, and also in order for the Filipinos not to anymore go abroad for good employment. Next, outrights grants for peer monitoring, harnessing science and technology as an independent mover of development, and review of RA9184, which is otherwise known as the Government the Procurement Reform Act, for the purpose of prescribing the necessary rules and regulation for the modernization, standardization, and regulation of the procurement activities of the Government of the Philippines. The third classification is medical, chemical, and pharmaceutical sciences, which includes ensuring compliance of drug manufacturing firms with ASEAN harmonized standards by full implementation of the Food and Drug Administration. This is to provide improved access to pharmaceutical products without compromising the safety, efficacy, and quality of pharmaceutical products placed in the ASEAN market. Then, creating an education council dedicated to standardization of, our, of pharmaceutical services and care. Empowering food and drug agencies to conduct evidence-based research as full of information. Allocating 2% of the GDP to research. And legislating a law supporting human genome projects. Human genome is a complete set of nucleic acid sequences for human encoded as DNA. Within the 23 chromosomes, pairs in a cell nucleic and in a small DNA molecule found within individual mitochondria. Then, the fourth classification of the policies is the biological sciences, agriculture, and forestry. It includes protecting and conserving biodiversity by full implementation of existing law, use of biosafety and standard model by ASEAN countries, promoting indigenous knowledge systems and indigenous people's conservation, and lastly, formulation of common food and safety standards. There are also existing programs supported by the Philippine government through the Department of Science and Technology or DOST. And it includes the following, providing funds for basic research and patents related to science and technology. And the government funds basic and applied researches. Funding of these research and projects are also from the Overseas Development Aid or ODA from different countries. Then, providing scholarships for undergraduates and graduate studies of students in the field of science and technology. Saluma, in 2015, pointed out that the country needs to produce more doctoral graduates in the field of science and technology and produce more research in these fields, including engineering. Then, the third, establishing more branches of the Philippine high school system. This is for training young Filipinos in the field of science and technology. Then, creating science and technology parks to encourage academic and industry partnerships. Next, Balik Scientist Program to encourage Filipino scientists abroad to come home and work in the Philippines or conduct research and projects in collaboration with Philippine-based scientists. Developing science and technology parks in academic campuses to encourage academic and industry partnerships. And lastly, the establishment of the National Science Complex and National Engineering Complex within the University of the Philippines campus in Diliman. And this aim to develop more science and technology and engineering manpower resources needed by the country. And they also aim to produce more researches in these fields. Also, the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering or the PASE in 2008 
identified several capacity building programs such as establishment of national centers of excellence it aims to sustain or develop excellence of higher education institution or hei by enhancing their teaching research and service program for further nation building and national development next is the manpower and institutional development programs such as the engineering and science education program or the ESEP to produce more of doctor of philosophy graduates in science and engineering so this one is part of the programs of the PASE it is because the improvement of quality of life is the main role of science and technology in the Philippine National Building. Then, third, establishment of regional centers to support specific industries that will lead the country in different research and development areas. So, why is it important to have different research and development areas in the country? It is because Research and Development, or RAD, is an important driver of economic growth as its first innovation, invention, and progress R&D. Spending can be capital-intensive but also can lead to breakthroughs that can drive both profits and well-being for consumers. Then, the establishment of science and technology business to assist advise and incubate technopreneurship ventures technopreneurship means the combination of the words technology and entrepreneurship it is a type of technology related in entrepreneurship however unlike entrepreneurship of which may often be one person so it requires tech savvy creative imaginative people who can take on calculated risks when it comes to when it comes to technopreneurship in engineering, the merging of knowledge in technology within entrepreneurship skills, it requires that only technical knowledge but also true understand, understanding of creativity, innovation process, marketing, finance, and strategic thinking. And the strengthened science education at an early stage through the Philippine Science High School system. Strengthening science education. So why is it important to strengthen science education? Well, science-related knowledge and scientific theory or literacy provide essential tools for surviving in the new jungle and for our responsible citizenship. They also teach us to understand our own actions and to be viewed them critically and to take care of our rights and that is why science education is important. In the field of education, several science-related programs and projects were created to develop scientific literacy of the country. And special science classes were organized and special science elementary schools were established in different regions. Aside from this, science and mathematics and basic education were continuously improved. And here comes the current K-12 education program that includes science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or what do we call STEM in senior high school, is one of its major tracks um, that is considered a program to encourage more students to enroll in science-related fields in college. And then lately, the Commission on Higher Education launched its Philippine California Advanced Research Institutes and some U.S.-based laboratories, research institutes, and universities to work on research and projects related to science, agriculture, engineering, health, and technology. These projects our hopes to strengthen the STEM competitiveness of the country. There are many other areas and fields that the country is looking forward to embark various research and projects, and these are the following. First, use of alternative and safe energy. 
harnessing mineral resources, finding cure for various diseases and illness, climate change and global warming, increasing food production, preservation of natural resources, coping with natural disasters and calamities, and lastly, infrastructure development. The Philippine Congress has also created various laws related to science and technology. And these laws serve as legal framework for science and technology in the country. These laws vary according to different such as conservation, health-related, technology building, and supporting basic research among others. Some laws and policies are in line with international treaties such as the United Nations or UN, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO, as Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, and other international agencies. So now let's take a look at the diagram. As shown in the diagram, the development of policies in science and technology is shaped or influenced by variables. Policies need to be aligned to national goals, consider international commitments based on legal frameworks, and respond to various social needs, issues, and problems on science and technologies. And policies ensure that the whole country and all people will experience the progress that science can bring. And why policies are important? Policies are guides to direct all efforts to a goal of developing a scientifically advanced country. So as a conclusion, science and technology policy is one of the public policies that promote appropriate funding to advance scientific and technological research and education studies the impact of science and technology upon its citizenry and prescribe regulation if necessary. So that's the end of my discussion. I am Hernes Angelica T. Sebastian. Thank you very much.